you're either going to have the defending champion keeping the belt, or you're going to have the guy who got it two years ago snatching the belt back. Bjergsen looking for maybe a little bit more Whoa! title star. The 2 0 for Bjergsen. Uzi outplays and has the run back from game one. I'm a little bit more unexpected, and I can pull out a lot of things that you might not expect. I'm back to, uh, to regain my title. our final day of the 2017 All-Star event. Players from all around the world have shown their grit throughout this week of competition as we've welcomed the rise of new heroes and embraced the return of our favorite veterans. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson, and these three fools who were too chicken to jump into the fan 1v1s are Indiana Frosker in black, Chris, Papa Smithy Smith, and Isaac Azale Cummings Bentley. How are we doing today? I was going to go out later on. Oh, oh, yeah, the classic. The classic. <laughs> I, was, I was just about yep. to do it. Uh-huh. You gonna are you gonna use the same excuse? Probably not. No, you're not gonna go out there. <laughs> definitely own it. Own chicken. It. You're gonna own the chickenness. And how about you? I can play some nasty. There it is. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Get out there, guys. It's been a ton of fun. Shocks and I have been getting our butts kicked, but enjoying it nonetheless. Last night we asked you to share some of your favorite moments from All Stars, and here are just a couple to kick off our day. First up, uh, woof, this one's hard. <laughs> Alucard Chad tweets about the man, the meme, the legend, and his clutch quadra. Let's take a look. Sneaky has to do it again. Big burst of damage down onto the Chinese squad. Curtain calls. They're all up against goes. the yeah, wall. Holtz Holtz is tied down. Oh. There's a deadly flourish. Holtz goes down. Barrett okay. now enlisted. North America is helped out by Barrett. Double kill for Sneaky. On the He's going in. Barrett flashed away from Sneaky. Ah. That's a triple. That's a triple. That's a quadra. Yeah, boy. Donald, Donald, Donald. I'm gonna go on the front. Yeah, you guys are on the front. You guys can go on the front. Thresh MF. You can stop it. You got that. You got that. You got that. You got that. You got this. Nice. Hey, we stopped it. We stopped it. They're gonna keep going. Oh, well. Nice. I'm coming. Watch this smiter. Watch this smiter. Just kill. Just kill. Just kill. Nice. Oh, nice. 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 Boy, nice. Let's get it. Yeah. I saw some grimaces on your face, Frost Girl, during that clip. Oh, uh, well, I can't, like, the audio is so funny, though. They're so calm. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zyrene's, like, losing yeah, his mind. Yeah, that's <laughs> my, my favorite part is Zyrene screaming to, yeah. like, the third kill. Just, like, <laughs> doesn't know how else to let that energy, like, out, aside from just a word vomit, essentially. Next up, the fan Gillies. Fanglies. Fanglies. <laughs> had his mind blown by CA, who is way too clean on Cassidy. WTF. Yeah, pretty egregious mistake as well, but here's Jisoo with the there ultimate. He's actually going to go for a power river, going to cut his way back in. Jisoo jumps on. Exhaust is good, though, from PoE. And now Jisoo, shockwave back in. No way good to go. Still is the ignite, but Jisoo ignite. actually still fighting. He might have gotten that kill there, but power Evil did have oh. the barrier. And now he can push in. He can threaten the dive. He has to try to threaten the dive here. If he can get in, he's, he's going. No, that's too far. Oh, oh it's going to be Oh, my God. It. It. Oh, my God, Jisoo. You're kidding me. Jisoo comes up with a miracle kill there. Uh, WTF? WTF? That's not <laughs> <Cassidy> play? <laughs> like, the most sick. impressive Cassidy in play I sure. have ever seen. Yeah. Credit to Jisoo, though, because that was probably the most hype ending to a 1v1 we've had so far. It was pretty uh, He has been... Pretty quite the explosive player. That's literally one of those players where you're not even mad that it's the wrong play. You're just like, that's exactly. the anyway. game. I was pulling for him in the 1v1s just to have some new blood in the Let's finals and somebody who was going to be willing to shake things up. That Tom Kench was a ton of fun to watch. Let's go ahead and take a look at that Cassidy in play now, perhaps. MLXG's running for his life. Malefic Visions is tagging across. The bullet time does so much damage. 957 as well as Shiai. They get two. That's a double, a triple. It's going to be a quadra kill for Shiai. And China are in the lead. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> They cut the clip early, but I'm pretty sure NA won that game. Yeah, <laughs> closed it out yeah, completely must, from must, there. Must. You know, great job, guys. I want a little. I want a little camera on Frostgren for every single one of these replays <laughs> because on that one, she was a like lot more pumped. Pump in and yep. like, yeah, super pumped by. It. Keep tweeting your favorite moments, and we'll keep sharing them throughout the show. Now, before we jump to today's matches, let's send it over to Shox, who's standing by with Brazil's superstar bot laner, to hear his thoughts 
on the event so far. Actually, I take that back. We're going to hold on here for just a moment. Maybe that interview will come to us in just a bit. Last night, the LMS defeated Southeast Asia to earn their spot today versus the LPL, who took Korea to three games and earned their slot in the All-Star Finals. And look, at the end of the day, LMS are 5-0. and oh. They've definitely crept up, and once again, they have been able to be just so powerful. And with a roster that, on reflection, looks very strong, but pre-tournament, everyone was looking at China and Korea, and the LMS very impressive. But Papa Smithy, the only game that the LPL has lost, they technically won the team. You fight would say that, Oscar. It says two on there. I can see the number. Yeah, they took the loss, man. There's no, <laughs> there's no taking that away from them. Remember the, the game LMS ends. looking strong, undefeated so far. Uh, you know, but there will be some questions around, you know, the the, the strength of schedule sure. per se. You know, in such a short they timeline, to have not yep. had. That's yep. true. They did beat Korea. Didn't have to play them in that no. best of series, right? Yeah, and, and it'll be really interesting. Obviously, they had the, the easier of the semifinals. No one's really going to debate that, but they have looked fantastic. And, you know, Carsa has been amazing throughout the entire tournament. So it's going to be really exciting to see how they actually stack up against the LPL team. It's also the fact that they really haven't had to show anything. You mm -hmm. know, even in their game against Korea, you haven't seen any of these big surprise picks come out of the LMS. It's been a couple of Zoe's here and Azir for Fofo, but he really hasn't had to stretch his champion pool at all to get here. I mean, the other thing to consider is that this is perhaps BB's last hurrah, right? He's, a, yeah. he's at least stated that he's going to retire. Who knows what will happen, but watching him play so far throughout this tournament has been spectacular. Some real highlight plays for him up against Uzi and the LPL. If he comes away with victory in this Cancel best of five, that's a pretty, still good, baby. I mean, that's Let's a go. pretty great way either to go out, right, or to reignite. Yeah, we didn't even get to yeah. show the pentakill as one of the highlight plays at the start of the day. And it's one of those things where, you know, players are certainly retired in League of Legends, but a lot of them gone out, have gone out with whimpers. So to actually go out with a big tournament like this, potentially a tournament victory, Retiring on the top is pretty sweet. Now, all this said, even with that momentum behind them, many consider the LMS to be the underdogs in this matchup versus the LPL. So let's talk about this LPL squad so far. So for me, the LPL squad has shown a lot of diversity in their play style. They've played from behind. They've played from ahead. They've shown more... It kind of feels like a meta read or a little bit safer. You look towards the LMS and you're like, uh, I don't necessarily know if I agree with a lot of these draft tendencies, prioritizing Rise, uh, letting things like the Zareth, the Misfortune go through, but maybe that was just a read on the GPL and maybe we'll see that shift up. But so far for this tournament, we don't have the same evidence because right now I just think that LPL are just a stronger drafting team right now, but they've been pushed harder. And potentially they've prepped a lot more. So it does feel like, especially as games go on, they have this kind of... Uh, ability and tendency to play games out cleaner than a lot of other teams I have here where the solo queue tendencies come through more. And to me also, it's been uh, actually an ability to look at the solo and as the two WE players and really highlight how 957 and Shia, every time I see them up close, my you know tier list ranking of where these guys land goes up and up because 957 especially has been right up there with Karsa as one of the stars of this tournament. Yeah, and I agree with that, but I think a lot of people will go about the the synergy that the LPL squad have going in, you know, doing that two week boot camp. On the other side, though, you have two JT members, you have two mm -hmm. Flash Wolves members, especially in their key shot calling positions. So there's just as much you know individual at least uh, flex queue synergy for the Flash Wolves, or excuse me, for the LMS as there is for the LPL. Well, let's talk about some of the synergies though within this team, right? So you've got Karsa and Sword Art, and we've even heard from Ziv that he mm -hmm. thinks that those two as a pair have largely contributed to the success of this roster at the tournament so far. You know, looking over the flip side, MLXG, that's the guy who's going to be tasked with kind of tracking Karsa and perhaps, uh, you know, unsettling him a bit as Karsa really seems to have found his own in this tournament. Yeah, Karsa has been amazing, and we have been lately hearing a lot of talk about jungle support synergy, obviously with the TSM roster change, with Ziv talking about it here. It's been such a focal point of the game, and you know, MLXG, I think, is going to have to have a good series to be able to at least contain Karsa. He doesn't have to be, you know, carrying, but Karsa has been an absolute monster and was pivotal in the LMS taking down the LCK team in groups. So if you don't contain this guy, he certainly could take over. And pretty much one and two in every jungle statistic for them. You, of course, talk about the supports as well. Let's talk about this bot lane matchup a little bit, as it is BB against Uzi, as well as Sword Art versus Mako. Yeah, the big guy there, Mako. I think Mako has been so underrated for so long. Like, people sing his praises, but I think he is the cream of the crop, the best support in the world, and unfortunately, he just doesn't get to compete in the region to really prove that. But in this roster, we get to see the dream team, Uzi versus Mako, and it has just been beautiful to watch. And again, it's a uniquely strong performance at All Stars for the LMS. Remember, Sword Art has actually never been the voted in support. It has been Maple monopolizing mid lane and removing that third mm -hmm. star Flash Wolf from being able to play. So seeing that synergy with Carsa that we know about on the international stage for Flash Wolves, 
Now it's here with his uh, national team, and that's been really big. Coming away with a victory and your, you know, debut all-star yeah. performance would be a pretty sweet way to go. We'll find out how that match plays out later in the day, because first up, we've got a clash between 1v1 Kings, Bjergsen and Uzi, and I want to know straight up from you guys who you think We'll walk away with the 1v1 crown. Frostgren, we're going to start with you. Surprise, surprise, I'm going for Uzi. He had it last year. I think he's going to go, go back to back with this one. I think, think he's, <laughs> he's shown a little bit more uh, diversity so far than Bjergsen. Bjergsen's been sitting on the mid lane picks. He's going for the kills, even though he did have one of those in the 100 CS win. But Uzi has shown the Syndra. He showed the Varus, so it's AD carry and mid lane picks for him. I'm sandwiched between the LPO analyst and the NAS, NALCS analyst, so I feel like I know where What's these guys are going. The right so yeah, yeah, it is, it is on me. I've always said that I think that Uzi's the best laner of all time. It's 1v1, it's laning, so I've got Uzi here. Mm -hmm. He's looked very strong. He's taking it epically serious, the Uzi versus Prey series, and Uzi's reaction when he did drop a single game was uh, a sight to behold, so I think he's got this. And to get the run back, right? You yep. know, showing that he learned from game one to you know, get that run back in games two and three. Azale? So I, I do actually think I, I have to go with Bjergsen, and, and for me, it's, it's not necessarily about the diversity. It's about the fact that he's playing so much to win. Like, his strategies have been very well crafted. I think the Talia pick was really smart. Like, the way he beat Faker, he didn't have to be better than Faker because he outthought Faker, and I think that's so much about 1v1. It's preparation. It's utilizing the best runes. It's utilizing the best strategies, and, you know, when I saw Uzi versus Prey, Prey took a game off him with Zoe, and that Zoe was not impressing me very much. So I think Bjergsen can play that at a higher level, and if you allow Bjergsen the flexibility to get the pick advantage, I think he's going to win. I was just about to ask that question, so I'm going to kind of turn this to you guys. What's your defense there for Uzi? As he did play, you know, AD carry versus mage matchup yesterday against a non-mid laner. Lost it, yes, did learn from it, but Bjergsen, without a doubt, will understand or be more comfortable uh, piloting some of those mages. So do you think... ADC or Mage inherently has an advantage? Uh, for me, I think ADC does, because I think the easier way to win it is to take the defensive summoners and then just go for the CS okay. victory as opposed to the all-in victory. I think that takes a bit more craftsmanship, which is why Bjergsen's victories have been so impressive, as Azale was talking about. Uh, in terms of the Zoe matchup, uh, I think either Uzi will ban it away, or maybe he'll let it go through once. Bjergsen will just absolutely smash him with it, and then <laughs> hopefully he'll and learn his lesson. Yeah. Right. All right, ladies, one more Final win. thoughts here, Papa Smithy? Yeah, I'm thinking about what's been played here and I feel like about the projected mage pool Zoe and the Sindri definitely knows that was a pick he played in the mid lane himself mm -hmm. has played this tournament you could think other about the Talia and go for the CS victory but I don't think that works either so I'm optimistic that Uzi knows where he's strong and certainly he's going to be on the 80 side there you have it we'll see who's the last man standing as we send it down to quick shot to introduce our competitors Thank you very much, Dash, and hello, everybody. Welcome to the Battle Theater, where this prestigious venue will play host to the 2017 All-Star 1v1 Finals. 16 competitors started the bracket, but we're down to only two. And we need to find out who will become the Highlander of the Howling Abyss. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the first of the two combatants, the king of the North American LCS, the crown mid laner that gives TSM their name. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Bjergsen! Trying to force double lift to miss CS, but ooh, gets the knockback. Gets it, there's a three, there it is, Bjergsen! 150 points for fire, and you're number one in the 1v1 2015 All-Star Competition. The former 2015 1v1 champion is trying to reclaim the title from the current 1v1 champion, the crown jewel of the LPL, the carry that put the name carry in AD carry. Ladies and gentlemen from RNG, I present to you Uzi! Maple not optimizing that passive. Three stacks on him now. He's gonna back up, does get the Q, but he's no exit. Done for. And Uzi is gonna be your 1v1 champion. There can be only one who gets to keep their head. May the finalist with the fastest fingers finish first. Put your hands together for Uzi versus Bjergsen.
Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am Clayton, Captain Flowers Reigns, ending my year the same way I started it, standing here in the Battle Theater next to one of my favorite casting cohorts, Sam, <laughs> Kobe, Hartman, Kinsler. I'm excited for this. Super excited. I mean, the 1v1s have been really up and down. Some people going for all in for the kill. Some people going for the CS. Uh, and these two guys have really shown that they deserve to be here. This should be a very exciting match. Like Quickshot told us all, this is the champ from two years ago versus the champ from last year. Either Uzi keeps the belt, goes back to back, <laughs> has that cool statement to make, or Bjergsen rips it back away from him and says, no, this is mine. I know, and it, the stage is perfectly set right now. Uh, I've always been a very optimi optimistic person as well. Even though North America was knocked out of the five-on-fives early in this tournament, mm. it actually gave them more time for Bjergsen to practice for the 1v1s. You know, he had a clear no mind. Actions. Everybody was, uh, you know, had these cheese strategies trying to 1v1 him and get him prepared. So I feel like there's going to be a lot more diversity uh, than the desk was talking about before. They're like, oh, you know, only a couple of mid lane champions for him. Now we're going to see some flavor. Well, let's hope we get plenty of that flavor. But for those of you who need a reminder, here's the rules for winning the 1v1 crown here today. You must be the first player to either last hit 100 minions, achieve first blood on your opponent, or destroy a tower before the opponent does. Fulfill any of those three win conditions, and you win the game. Win two games, you win the match, you get the trophy, you get the belt, you get everything. And let's go over some of the things that we've already seen be successful in the 1v1 tournament. Because Azale was talking about planning, and planning really does go a long way. Uh, we've seen that the futures market, as far as at least your secondaries, has been very valuable to get a lot more potions. Uh, because a lot of these 1v1s have been actually ending before the 100 CS mark, uh, and you want that sustained super early on. Uh, we have also seen a lot of the success of the AD carries and uh, mid lane champions primarily. But uh, Zoe... Bjergsen was specifically talking about he knows how to play it better than Prey showed yesterday. So if Uzi does end up leaving that open, uh, we'll get to see it in the hands of someone who's actually put a bunch of time on the champion. And let's not forget Uzi's words to Shox yesterday after his victory over Prey. He didn't really know how Zoe worked. He just <laughs> managed to outplay Prey on it. So it works. If he's up against somebody who knows the champion a little bit better, it might be more difficult for him. And Uzi, even though he, he did say, oh, I don't know how it works, he made some adjustments that made it seem like he did understand how it works as he changed his summoner spells uh, and he didn't want to give over any more exhausts or, or things like Ignite uh, to the Zoe, who is going to do the all-in, you know, run at you and try and pick them up with the spell thief, with their W, uh, and run you down. Now, that's why we're going to be really closely watching this champion select because usually you know the blanket 80 carry bands have been thrown at uzi but i really like the uh the syndra <laughs> target bands that have been thrown at him apparently chapstick is hilarious hey you can't have chap lips you're going into the howling abyss it's cold you got to be ready to go but if uzi didn't know how zoe worked the man was a very quick study like you said he adapted very well up against prey he knows a bit more about it going into the matchup today and both these guys, one thing we saw yesterday when Bjergsen was going into his matchup against Jisoo, he said he was ready for some of these picks that weren't really optimal in mm -hmm. his mind. He said the 80 carries and the mid laners he thought were the best. Well, these two, their champion pools are similar, right? You've got the 80 carries, you've got the mid laners, you've got these champs that people are expecting. It's not Olaf's and Tom Kench's and <laughs> the kind of stuff that Jisoo was playing. So I'm expecting these two to have a good feel for each other. But we did hear Uzi say in the opening little bit of a insight we got into what they were thinking before this he was concerned maybe Bjergsen's gonna play something he's not familiar with ah uh, could be the case we saw him hovering the Heimerdinger before Deficio got super excited <laughs> Deficio really wanted Deficio commented I believe on Bjergsen's tweet last night too just donger with an exclamation point he wants to see the Heimerdinger yeah I mean Heimerdinger actually is could be successful in 1v1s but it would primarily be into like melee matchups and mm -hmm. the thing about this is that it's blind pick so you don't see if nope. they're actually chosen a melee champion beforehand uh, so maybe not so much it's a little bit risky especially when your opponent is known as one of the number one 80 carry players in the world and i don't know about you kobe but in league of legends i think 80 carries are usually mostly ranged i think they're overrated uh, as a jungler <laughs> myself i just like to prey on them they seem like easy kills i would rather just play zin Zhao into them and run at them. <laughs> that's, my that's my man that's what we do <laughs> that's how you do it but that's probably not what we're going to see here in the howling abyss today no. and you were talking about the runes a little bit earlier and yesterday one rune we saw a lot of in terms of keystones because you know it's normally the biggest most important rune it is the biggest as yeah. far as size of the sphere okay fair uh, enough that's the biggest circle is the keystone rune but airy is getting a lot of popularity 
in these one versus ones. We're seeing that consistency way out huge. And that really does make sense because Aerie is the keystone designed for trading in lane. The lowest cooldown of those ones that just add damage you know, to your spells uh, and to the harassment that you're trying to get off uh, on your opponents. So we've seen it really be the priority. However, uh, you know, comment as far as five on fives uh, and dual lanes, we saw a lot of that. If you have ways to keep them in it, uh, so maybe there's a little bit of flexibility, but you're right. It's pretty much been sorcery and inspiration as your secondary uh, yep. and the normal way to go. We'll be tracking these runes very closely to see if there's anything outside the box, though, uh, to update you guys. We do have them just finishing up a couple more uh, settings on stage. That's why we're delaying. Got to make sure you're getting ready. They got to make sure they're in the right zone for this. This is for the crown. It's for the trophy. That's a draven axe in an ice cube. That's really cool looking. <laughs> and you don't want to leave that up to some settings being messed up. Yeah, uh, honestly, I think it is definitely an upgrade from the one that we had a couple years ago. I saw that in the video or whatever, Bjergsen had just the uh, kind of ice pillar or something. Yeah. This one's got some more, you know, personality to it. Yeah, we cut down part of the pillar. We threw an ax in it. And now, ah, here we're we talking go. about. That's the improvement. The music starts up. The camera zooms out. And we are into Champion Select. Let's see how the bands go. Misfortune is the number one band here. Captain Flowers right off the Following table. Following that one up, it's going to be a zero on the other side. Oh, of my Select God. Bobby. Oh, my goodness gracious. I never imagined. Yes, I did. These champions <laughs> are actually pretty common to see throughout the band so far. We 80 have carries and mid laners. Who would have imagined? Mid laners banned against the mid laner. 80 carries versus the 80 carry. All right, the prime trio has been banned out there with Lucian rounding it up. Uh, for Bjergsen here, and Uzi forced to ban Syndra himself in North Blendum, his most played mid lane champions, and there we go, that's what everyone wanted to see, Zoe on display. All right, let me harken back to what Proskurin said a grand five minutes ago. She <laughs> thinks Uzi will leave Zoe open one time, Bjergsen will go crazy with it, and at that point forward, it will have a spot on Uzi's ban list. Now let's see what he thinks he can play in this because he knows Zoe is available and he will take that Callista that Prey kept banning against him yesterday. So here's one of the things with Callista. Obviously, she has the earliest built-in dash in the entire game because you can get it with the auto attack and keep autoing and hopping backwards as Zoe runs at you with her summoner spells. So this is probably what he's looking for here uh, as Zoe starts the charge. Usually it will be a level three charge. Once she gets the extra point, puts it in their spell, uh, Thieves, and then just tries to run at you and pick up your summoner spells as you drop them. Now the one thing you also want to keep in mind, two offensive summoner spells uh -huh. from Uzi. Bjergsen, if Uzi uses those, can pick them up once he has Spell Thieves and continue to apply that extra pressure in the one versus one. That's one of the adaptations. Oh, last minute yesterday. switch, though. Last minute switch. He's, he's trying to trick him up a little he's bit. He's got the heal now instead of the ignite. Give him okay. a little bit more speed. Gives him a little bit more speed, and it's something Bjergsen can't pick up to kill him with. We saw that be a mistake yesterday. One of the things that sort of hurt Uzi, one of the adaptations he made mm -hmm. in between the first games and the last games of that match, he wanted to deny that ability to allow the extra all-in potential. All right, now one thing I will say about this map specifically here, Howling Abyss, uh, playing against Zoe, I can see why Uzi you know, wants another chance of this. He had two victories yesterday, but also uh, you can stay right in the middle of the map so you're not close to the edges. That's where, you know, if the bubble misses and, and hits, a, hits a wall or something, it gets to take up a very big part of the map. And Howling Abyss is pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, don't stand next to the wall. Uh, and as long as you can use the minions as well, there are actually a lot of ways that you can dodge. The Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Sleepy Trouble Bubble. We saw Prey miss it a couple of times in his all-ins against Uzi yesterday. Bjergsen, like you mentioned earlier, saying he's commanding a greater mastery of the champion mm -hmm. than Prey was able to muster from what we saw. Look at it right there. Around. Oh, yeah, my God. Reaching into the portal. Oh, we didn't get to see what he found. I don't know if she actually has different things that come out of the portal like Caitlyn does with hats, but if she does, oh my God. that's one of my favorite things to spam in the game. We're in for another 20-minute hat talk with Happy We ain't even going to have a 20-minute game, Kobe. This is one versus one. This is fast-paced, high-octane League of Legends action. That's true. Let's take a look at that. Paddle Ooh. Star going to hit right there from Bjergsen, predicting the hop from Uzi, a lot of this game, as far as 1v1 uh, does go, comes down to prediction, right? Uh, and getting wow. a handle <laughs> on a couple of the ways that your opponent has a tendency to dodge really does bode well for Bjergsen. Now you can see he's focusing on the minions, trying to get the push going. And he will find that level two in time. Uzi level two now as well. And for Bjergsen, normally you look at Zoe and you think, okay, she needs to hit the bubble, and then she can hit the paddle star. But Bjergsen has just been landing these pretty well so far. Gonna go ahead and use the bubble there as a zoning tool. 
Uh -huh. Paddle Star connects again. Uzi's got to be a little bit more careful about dodging away from these Kobe. He's eating a few too many. I mean, you can say be careful about dodging the bubbles, but the bubbles yeah. take up half of the map. I was saying, oh, yeah, <laughs> this map's better than Summoner's Rift for dodging the bubbles because you don't have to be a in a small jungle corridor, but it still takes up about half of the corridor there. And you could see he couldn't walk back into it, so that allowed Bjergsen then to land his Paddle Star anyways, but you still want to dodge it because then you don't get hit with the bonus damage. And you can see a little Zoe bubble there on the ground. It does contain Ghost. That's not something that Bjergsen can use immediately to great effect, considering Uzi is so close to the turret, you're not going to run him down in some sort of a long lane, some kind of a sprint situation. So with the minion, though. How that continues to go here. Okay, a cleanse. Going to just pick that one up, pop it to get the... So fresh and so clean now. Extra damage. Yep. Always feeling good. Uzi continuing to farm up. He's feeling all right, too. 21 to 24 in the CS department. So very even farm between these two. So many times in these 1v1s, you see somebody play, you either play for farm or you play for push. And both these guys seem to be playing the farm game the same as Bjergsen. Looking to go in now, able to find the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Paddle Star finds its way onto Uzi, who pops the heel. Oh! Nearly down. Barely walks away, but he has both summoner spells remaining. Yeah, very close right there. Uzi almost able to get off and uh, finish up Bjergsen, but now he is going to get the recall off, it looks like. So Bjergsen pushing the cannon minion wave into the turret. Will Bjergsen go up and grab that heal, or will he get back right now? I'm going right. to go with option number two, because it's later, and I can see that he I already chose that. I was going to say, you're <laughs> cheating, and you're looking at the monitor that has the option anyway. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> Meanwhile, he was able to perk up the extra four potions right there for Bjergsen, so he has a lot of sustain coming back to this matchup. Yes, Uzi is an AD carry, and he does have lifesteal on the double Dorans, but that doesn't mean as much as the constantly chugging potions that we'll see here. Uh, Bjergsen now trying to thin out the wave, uh, see if he can look to gain control again. And I mean, potions are such a big part of these 1v1s, right? It's like Papa Smithy said, this is laning. You are essentially just playing through an exaggerated laning phase that the jungler can't mess with. And you've got to respect the value of the potions in that. Bjergsen gonna go ahead, drop an ignite that he picked up onto Uzi there. Battle Star trying to come back in. Does manage to find him, utilizing the ulti. Nice job there on Bjergsen, giving himself that extra little bit of range. But Uzi still looks just fine, using his own potion to heal back up. Jerkson feeling a bit more comfortable now. Has that extra reach with the ulti, but you have to remember, Zoe's ult doesn't really add a big ult like most other champions. Well, Kalista's ultimate has doesn't, nobody. Doesn't do anything on a one partner one. one. <laughs> she actually just can't do anything with it. Bjergsen finds a sleepy trouble bubble. Can't get a paddle star in time. Just goes for the auto attack. Remember, once somebody does go to sleep from the bubble, mm. the next source of damage to hit them will wake them up from the CC, but will also deal double damage up to a cap. So you got to make sure you try to hit him while he's asleep if you can. 51 to 46 in the CS department. Bjergsen continuing to push up now. Abuse the AOE on the paddle star. Yeah, that's the number one rule of most fights, actually. If they fall asleep while you're fighting them, get your hits in then. Just hit them with something. It don't matter. <laughs> Regardless, though, we do have some rune information coming in now as well. And it does look like, you know, we we're talking about the secondary choices. Bjergsen, once again, has gone for the biscuit delivery, uh, as well as the futures market, where you go into debt, buy some more potions, uh, and it gives you this amount of control that we're seeing here, where he has the extra sustain. Whereas Uzi has gone for the second wind, uh, as well as the mirror shell this time around for the flat magic resist. You know, that's coming from the resolve tree. So it gives you a, a bit of more sustain, but not quite as high of an impact as the extra potions. Now you see, I think that's, Uzi's thinking in terms of Summoner's Rift, right? Because on Summoner's Rift, Secondary Resolve Tree can be great if you're going into a lane like this and you think you're going to take some damage. Second wind's like a Dorian Shield passive, Mirror Shell, it's extra MR. But this ain't Summoner's Rift, it's over when you get a kill. Well, also, the Resolve Tree gains some value too, the longer it goes, right? Because you went into debt to buy those extra potions, yeah. uh, and you're constantly getting value out of your second wind. Uh, as well as the flat magic resist. So Uzi here farming up to level seven now, and he has the vamp scepter. So sustained now, he's in a very comfortable spot. Plus, he has the extra tankiness. Uh, he's really been able to kind of work through the initial scary part, but now they're walking up with the redemption found from Beard. I always have to stop for just a second and be like, wait, hold on a second, because I see the redemption. I'm like, nobody's playing a support in this game. Nobody's rushing redemption in one versus one. That's true. And then you remember Zoe's on the map, and anything is possible. Bjergsen's still farming these up. 
70 to 62 in farm, but Uzi's got a nice HP advantage for now. Steps on the trouble bubble. Yerkson trying to make that AOE happen, does not find it, so he misses out on the sleep bonus damage. Yep, got to go with the footwork there. Uzi walks behind oh. the minion. Yes, and gets popped! And he takes the drink. Easy victory there. Yep. Paul Uzi, he knows that it's the best of three, though. Can't get too excited. Getting a little big for his britches, jumping in like that. Straight up in Uzi's face, had very little HP remaining, and Uzi punishes. Yeah, Uzi, he played the grind game. Here, there were, I was just about to talk about how he walked behind the minions, so even though he got hit by the Sleepy Trouble Bubble, uh, they were blocked by the minions, and then Bjergsen found himself very far up, and Uzi easily able to take him out, rends him down, and takes first blood here on the Howling Abyss. See Uzi there with that clap. He knows he did good. Only got to do it one more time, and that trophy is his. He gets his back-to-back -back goal. good. Yup. The man <laughs> did what he needed to do. It was looking a little sketchy there for a while because he was going down in farm. Bjergsen had controlled the waves better mm -hmm. overall up until that point. It doesn't matter how good you control the waves if you jump into him and Callista spears you. <laughs> He's got his resolve tree, gets a bunch of lifesteal, grinds it up, and uh, he's finally able to close out. Now let's see. What is uh, Bjergsen going to go to in his time of need? Because this is just the best of three. He can't lose another one. He's going to have to go to one of those flavor picks or cheese picks or whatever you want to call them that we were hyping up. Everyone keeps saying, oh, Mike Young's been practicing with him. He's got cheese picks. Oh, my picks. God. Everybody's going to be. What is it going to be, Captain Flowers? What's your cheese pick? Oh, what's? I mean, my cheese pick is in jail because I only play two champions. So <laughs> I'd probably play that if I was in this. But that's why I'm not in this, Kobe, because these guys have a little bit more up their sleeves than I do. My sleeves are a little bit constricted. Uh-oh, more chapstick, more that's chapstick. the answer. That's the cheese right there. You got to get the chapstick, make sure the lips are comfortable. Then you can start thinking about what you're going to do in the game. Out of the game, uh -huh. that's what comes first. You gotta it's really about yourself. the second layer of protection there. The yeah. first layer uh, just kind of softens it up. But now, now he's ready. Now he's ready to go. But you know what I want to see in this second game is whether or not Bjerg takes the same approach to it that we kind of saw Uzi and Prey take to their third game yesterday, mm -hmm. which is where they took the same champs that they had played earlier, and they had both lost once on each. So you're saying, it's not the champ, I messed it up. It was my fault, it's not the matchup. Does Bjergsen see it that way? Is he comfortable playing the same matchup again, thinking he just misperformed it? Or is he thinking, okay, Zoe and Callista doesn't do as good as I thought it was going to do. Let's uh, too bad, Captain Flowers. We will All never right. get to the center of that Tootsie Pop. We will never know the answer because Uzi has banned it out. Well, Froskuren, you were right. She said he was going to play against it one time and then ban it away, and Uzi will ban it away in well, the second game. But you're giving, you're giving free credit there. She said he was going to lose to it. Froskuren, you were wrong. <laughs> I rescind my previous comment. But now, the Syndra is open. That's the thing. You ban away these three champions last time that you respected from Bjergsen's pool. Mm. You had to remove one of them. He decided Syndra was the one he was most comfortable with that is available for Bjergsen now, while Bjergsen's bans will remain the same between games one and two. The Kalista, he says, is not as much of a problem as any of these three would be, and it looks like Bjergsen is going to break out what he used to beat Faker. Oh, baby. In the same matchup he used to beat Faker. Who's the better Syndra, Uzi or Faker then? Is Uzi, so wait, if Uzi wins this one, do we say that Uzi is the better Syndra than Faker? We probably say Uzi is the best player in the entire world of all time since the beginning. No, <laughs> we'll have to, I mean, we'll have to he'll have the one back a little bit. He'll have the 1v1 trophy. He will have won the matchup that Faker lost. <laughs> I mean, at that point, you're not exaggerating too much, are you, Kobe? You're building a very uh, convincing case, my friend. Well, let's see how convincing of a case these guys can build for themselves because I want to see the all-in. I want to see the blood for this one. We got to see the champion kill to end that last game. Mm -hmm. We haven't actually got to see any of these 1v1s in through turret kill at all throughout the course of this whole All-Star 1v1 event this year, which I think is cool because turret kills aren't champion kills, and that's why I want to see them all in. So hopefully we get to see this one go down with an epic one versus one fight. I think if we do get to that point, it's probably going to be uh, an advantage to Uzi because Uzi is the one with the level six ultimate that is designed for solo kills. Yeah. Whereas yep. Talia, uh, not a very useful ultimate here for the Howling Abyss. Not a very useful ultimate, but let's not forget last time around, Uzi didn't even have an ultimate. Uzi didn't have a W. Well, Uzi had two skills and managed to find his win. So. Let's see what he can do here in this one. Taking a look at the summoner spells, you got four unique ones between the two champions. Barrier Exhaust, that common takeover for Bjergsen. 
Uzi swapping it up, going to that Silsol special we talked about yesterday. Ignite and heal hmm. on this Syndra. Some extra burst power, some extra survivability, and movement power to maybe step out of the way of something coming from the Talia if he ends up getting himself in a rough spot. I like it. Nice reference, by the way. Some throwback and I've been playing it for a long there. time, too. I've been playing since 2009. I wasn't good in 2009 <laughs> like you guys were, but I've been playing since then. I see you, Captain Flowers. <laughs> All right, well, as far as the runes go, we can update you once again. Uzi, he's sticking to his mirror shell and second wind resolve combo, uh, whereas Bjergsen goes for the Futures Market, as well as the Biscuit Delivery, and he's all about heavily drinking in the one versus one matchup. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep chugging those potions and going back to base. We know how Bjergsen likes to play this one. He wants to shove out, pressure Uzi, keep him under the turret, make him have to respond to the minions, and win through that sort of pressure. That's how he managed to beat Faker. And remember, uh, a little bit different turret damage to minions on this map, as we've seen over and over. A lot of the guys have gotten used to it by now, but if the ranged minions take much damage at all, then they just get one shot by the turret. Uh, so you don't want to prep those uh, yourself, just wait for the turret shot, and then you can finish it off, whereas the melee minions on Howling Abyss are very similar to ranged minions from Summoner's Rift. You can see Uzi trying to adapt to that right now, but that turret damage you were talking about can make it very, very difficult. At that point, what do you even do as the Syndra? The minion is at half HP. You pick it up, and you throw it in his face. Well, what happens if you don't know the pick up the minion ability, Kobe? He doesn't have it learned yet. He's got his soccer ball kick. Man, too bad. <laughs> well, too bad. All right, too bad. So sad. Sayonara, you missed out on this one. Bjergsen going back to base. Uzi slightly off the mark for interrupting it. 15 CS to 8. This is exactly the game Bjergsen wants to play. It's slow and it's steady, but it wins the race. Pick that sucker up. There we go. Oh, he's level three now. Now he has the ability to pick it up. This is going to be interesting because Uzi, Uzi only has one Doran's ring at the moment uh, because he didn't have to go back. Uh, and Bjergsen, with that early recall, has given kind of wave pushover back to Uzi. However, the extra ability power here from his second ring might be the difference. And if you're talking about looking towards all ins and one versus ones, the Talia would theoretically want to get that done before level six if he really thought it was going to come down to it. Unfortunate skill shot placement there for Uzi, just slightly off on both of them. Bjergsen stepping back to grab his health pack. Uh -huh. We'll continue pushing up into this wave. Got a lot of work ground down, though. Does have a lot of work ground down. Gives him the extra speed, uh, though it does reduce the amount of shots that are going to come out. Uh, he has a very healthy CS lead, though. So yeah. it's either go super long you know, for the CS lead and just kind of work around the Syndra ultimate, uh, maybe build some defenses later on. Biscuit Delivery has arrived here for number one, so that will help as well for the sustain and for kind of grinding out that CS lead that he's been able to accrue. And Biscuit Delivery, I mean, it's not a mastery or a rune, excuse me, mm -hmm. that you see a lot of the time on Summoner's Rift. So I think a lot of times people forget that not only does it function as a potion, it also gives you extra mana whenever you eat them. So that's going to help him as he continues to play this out and continues trying to play the shove game. One of the most important things is, of course, dodging <laughs> yep. in the, the skill shot matchups here. And as we've seen, some pretty good dodges there from Bjergsen, avoiding a lot of the damage at the moment, but it doesn't really cost Uzi that much. As you can see, very high on mana. Ooh, nice placement there from Bjergsen, but Uzi responding with some well-placed abilities of his own. Bjergsen needs to be very mindful of this if Uzi ticks level six. And remember, Uzi is also running the Ignite. Uh, so that will stick on him even after the barrier is going to time out if they're trying to look for that burst. Bjergsen respecting what Uzi can do here. Uzi three quarters of the way to level six. Bjergsen now finding his own ultimate ready to go. But like you mentioned earlier, Kobe, it doesn't do anything. You can throw the wall at him when he's backing and sort of delay him a few seconds. But outside of that, you won't get much use out of this. Yeah, he could try and go for a back himself and then ult back to the lane maybe and use the extra item power as a little bit of a advantage. But Uzi's doing his best to clean out the minions right now, and we'll see if Bjergsen does. He actually did skill it, so probably going to use it back to lane. He skills it, and he also picks up a completed Mercury Treads. He wants to make sure he not only has the movement speed to step out of the way of the skill shots from Uzi Syndra, but he wants to make sure that if he does get hit by the stun, it's going to be lessened. And whatever he gets hit by, the extra magic resist will make it so maybe he doesn't get 100 to 0, and he can continue to survive and play this farm game that he's still uh. up. So instead of using it to get back to lane quicker, he's decided to cut off the minions. This builds up a double stacked wave here. You can see there's a ton of extra rain minions. So he's ensuring that they kill off more of his minions and push towards him. Now, that's a good strategy in getting 
uh, a bigger CS lead if he can still get a lot of these last hits under his turret. Right, and it also works because he's already ahead. He doesn't have to worry about little losses Whoa. like that, but now Uzi's got him in a spot he might have to worry about again. Uzi not quite finding the scatter of the week he's looking for there. Yerkson sitting with a 12 CS lead over his opponent, but he's still only slightly over halfway to the goal, so quite a long way to go. And considering Uzi now has that level six potential, that all-in threat, Jurgsen will have to play this very, very carefully. It was his own audacity that bit him last time, and he can't fall into that same trap. Yeah, and you can see Uzi's really fishing for it. By chugging a health potion this late, making sure he's 100% health, you can see he wants to go for an all-in. He wants to get a little risky. Seismic shove will find its mark onto Uzi. Uzi's retaliation will connect. Shove continues, Reddit Volley is there, Red Team has lost half its minions, but the thing is, Blue Team's lost about two-thirds of theirs. Yeah, and Bjergsen has a giant, very comfortable CS lead that he's working with, so if he can grind it out uh, and finish this one off before Uzi gets a chance to all in. Uzi's looking for it, though. Slightly concerning in terms of mana right now. He doesn't have enough to continue just running after Bjergsen, firing off a spell Gatling, but... Yerkson's feeling comfortable enough. On that worked ground, he's got the extra movement speed mm. that you talked about when we mentioned earlier. Yeah, you throw less rocks, but you get hit by less orbs. It's exactly. A and it's a huge, huge benefit to the style that he's playing. If you're playing for the CS, oh, then, uh oh, 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 Uzi's looking to make it happen. There comes your exhaust onto the Syndra ulti. That's exactly the timing Bjergsen was looking for. So one summoner down for each of them. At this point, Uzi doesn't have the extra move speed from the heel now uh, to help him in the all in. You know, maybe want to close some distance or something. But uh, Bjergsen now without the exhaust for the Syndra ultimate, that could be critical if Uzi decides to actually uh, go for it. At the same time, though, we got to keep our eyes on that CS timer. Because I was talking earlier, I was saying, look, it's barely over half. Mm -hmm. Well, it's starting to climb up there now. Bjergsen has a massive amount of minions to farm up right here, right now. He just hit 75. There's four more waves to go, and he's done. Actually, that's a good point. 80 seconds left on the ultimate from Uzi. So there's not going to be time for it. And Bjergsen, it looks like he has really done his homework this time around. He's set up very nicely to try and take a CS victory and push it to a deciding third game. Third and final match we could be looking at here. Bjergsen will continue to find those minions, 84 to 74. And what you always end up seeing in these games, you can try to play the farm game, you can try to deal with Bjergsen here, take your time, but eventually you hit the point where he's at 90 farm, 95 farm. You just can't wait anymore. And if you're Uzi, your only option left is run at it. And remember, Bjergsen can use his ultimate once again to either double stack the wave or get back there. Since he's just walking, looks like he's going to use it uh, once again to try and get the minions in his advantage. Continually uh, backing here when the extra cannon minion for Uzi's side is going to help them push. So Uzi stays behind in CS and he knows time is working against him. 85, 87 now. Uzi wants to control the health pack away from Jerkson. We'll do so. 15 seconds left on Uzi's ultimate, though. Sinja's ultimate will come back in time, just barely here, for another attempt at an all-in, and he has to go for it. He's got such a small window to work with. 94 is the count for Bjergsen. One minion wave, should he find them all? One second on his ultimate, and now it's available. All right, Bjergsen knows Uzi's got kill threat. Let's see what Uzi can do with this. We're gonna make the all-in happen. Starts off with the ulti, able to find Scatter the Weak, but it does not look like this is going to work. Five. One melee minion died. Bjergsen still has six creeps alive, though. If he can kill all six of these, he will win the game right here. He misses out on the cannon. He misses out on range number two. He misses out on range number three, and range number four is gonna elude him as well. He's still got three more to clear, but Uzi is so low on mana. One for Bjergsen. Two more. This is so Uzi. intense. Look at the player Uzi. care. Throw that minion at him, boy. Go! Oh! Bjergsen, CS victory to take us to game number three. Okay, so Woo! we've had the payoff now. Once again, the CS focus to Leah. He already used it in this tournament. He was able to get Uzi with it. And Uzi kind of brushed that one off. They know that the next one will decide it all. All right, take another look here. Bjergsen is walking on the work ground. Getting those dodges in, moves right up to the minion wave, knows he only needs one more, and is able to secure it. Slow and steady for <laughs> Bjergsen. He makes it happen, he survives the all-ins, he exhausts the first ulti, and Uzi seemed like he almost panic engaged at the last second. He was like, nope, dude's gonna kill the minions, gotta ult him now. Ults him immediately, scatter the weak, wasn't that effective. 
That's the feeling that you get when someone plays this type of game against you, right? He's been able to control the minions for so long that you can see the loss coming at you. You see it coming a full minute ahead. Oh no, only a couple more minion waves. And then my ult is up. I have to kill him now. That's that amount of pressure is gonna make you uh, you know, succumb to something like this. Like it's a long way away. At 50 minions, you're thinking, okay, I got time. Don't worry about it. I have a chance to all in soon, it'll be great. At 75 minions, you're thinking, all right, we still got a few more waves, there's time to think about it. At 90 minions, at is 90 that gift minions, of the guy permanently sweating? Yeah, the guy's just permanently sweating, and you just say, okay, go. Hit the button, go in there as fast as you can because that's your only choice. It didn't work out for Uzi in game number two, and now these guys have one last showdown. Who will be the only player to ever get two victories, be two one versus one championships, and have that to their names? Uzi wants it back to back. Uzi really wants it back to back because that's a really cool thing to do. I mean, for Bjergsen, taking the belt back is awesome, but then to get a chance at having it back to back. He's got to win this year and next year. <laughs> yeah. Uzi's already there. He's halfway to it. And he just has to win one more game here. But maybe this is when we see that thing he was talking about, that secret Bjergsen cheese pick that he was worried of. I guess, but I would have thought he would have pulled it out last time when it was game point, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but, I, you know, he had confidence in the Talia minion focus strategy. He knew he beat Faker with it. He said he can beat Uzi with it. We were talking about if Uzi does this, is he better than Faker? We haven't found anybody better than Faker yet, Kobe. It's pretty hard to do. <laughs> We're still searching. Anybody out there have an application? Sign up now. You can we send it you. to us. Email captainflowers at uh, yahoo.com. That's not it. That's not it at all, but we're not going to give them you a probably, email address. You probably use, <laughs> still use some AIM or AOL or something <laughs> like that. All right. My email address aside, let's see <laughs> what Bjergsen and Uzi are going to summon up for this third and final game in this one versus one finale. Bans the same for Bjergsen so far. Uzi copying what he did in game number two, still respecting the Zoe from game uh -huh. number one. Now, Bjerg, what's it going to be? Is he going to ban the... Okay. Yep, bans the Pharisee. <laughs> we don't have to wait too long to get these, answers, <laughs> these, these questions answered. They've been very similar. All right, Syndra banned out. The Rise is open now. He had previously been banning Rise out. Rise is now available for Bjergsen to pick. Bjergsen can also pick Talia, yeah. go for the same strategy he went for last time, but ooh, ooh, did we get to see the Rise? Yes, we do. Now let's see how Uzi wants to deal with that. Is it gonna be Kalista again? He had a good showing on it in game number one. He had it banned against him in his semifinal against Prey. I'm a predictor, oh, man, I did it. God, put me on the analyst desk. Captain Flowers from the future here. Yeah. Now, don't put me on the analyst desk. I probably just talked about Skarner. Let's not do that. But in this game, Exhaust, Exhaust, Barrier versus Ignite. Uzi might change him at the last second again. We don't know. But Ryze does not have the ability to steal the summoner spell away. So if Uzi wants to go full offense all the way in with those summoners, it could totally work here. He can't. It's just so difficult against Ryze. There's a, there's a reason why so many of the mid laners just love this champion so much, even though a lot of the teams weren't able to find victories. And notoriously, Ryze did not have a very good win rate at Worlds. Uh, however, in the one versus one, this is where he's going to shine, right? He, he has the rune prison. He can just lock down the Callista, remove one of her greatest strengths with the mobility, and then rise once he can proc uh, the passive as well, and you get your own mobility as well as an extra shield. So this seems like a pretty good matchup here for the rise side, but Uzi was already able to take down Bjergsen with the Callista in game number one and able to grind it out till he got a bunch of lifesteal and just control uh, around that mid lane. I want to see if Bjergsen ends up using the Rise Ultimate <laughs> to make this happen because Bjergsen has been part of some of the most iconic Rise Ultimate uh -huh. moments in the North American LCS. And I want to see if he can add one, another notch to his belt so with the All Stars. Would you rather have him pull something crazy with Rise Ulting minions and having some weird, like, double minion wave strategy pushing in and getting a turret kill or something like that? Or would you rather have him? Go for a kill, like we saw with the Tom Kench earlier. I want that uh, one. Yeah. 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 That, one has, that one has champions killing champions. The first one only has champions killing minions. That was actually my favorite 1v1 of the entire tournament. The phase rush Tom Kench uh, running halfway across uh, across the lane back after he had gotten his ultimate off to get the, the munch down. Here we go, though. Let's take a look if uh, Uzi's going to be able to control the wave early. He's got the presence in the brush already established. Yep, he's controlling the side areas. He's got his Howling Abyss strategies on lock. But now, 
We'll have to see if he can manage to defend his title, secure his crown for the second year in a row, or if Bjergsen will manage to snatch it back at the last moment. Bjergsen just hanging out right now. Not wanting to go fight the Callista mano a mano at level one. Rise doesn't have multiple spells to work with at this point. Only has the overload right now. So not really gonna worry about it. Just wants to hang back, not risk the health bar early. Remember that Uzi runs press the attack here on the Callista. So you have to really respect the chase down. Yep. Uh, once he stacks it up, gets that three proc, makes you exposed to extra damage. Well, I guess it doesn't even have to stack it up there. It gets some nice yep. harassment onto Bjergsen, who was just walking too close. Just a freebie there. Bjergsen will try to farm up as good as he can. He is down in levels right now, so he doesn't want anything to do with going up towards Uzi for a fight. Uzi also having that ignite. Worth noting that he did not change summoner spells at the end this time, like we saw in game number one. So full offense here on the summoner spells. Bjergsen with exhaust and barrier, he'll be having a little bit more defensive capability for himself. Let's see how well he does farming up underneath this turret. It's gonna be a bit difficult, I think. Yeah, let's see. So, none of the rain minions right now would die to one shot, except this one on the very top. Cannon minion goes without him collecting any gold. So do the melee minions, but he's Oh no, a turret shot onto Uzi! Have That's to worry about the rain. Very unlucky there, Bjergsen backing himself up. He actually gets the better of that trade thanks to the turret. He has an extra potion as well. Remember, starting off Dorian's Ring versus Dorian's Blade, you have one extra pot. Yeah, and Uzi with a dominating CS lead here, absolutely crushing it. So Bjergsen already in the position where he's going to have to look for a spot in the game uh, to try and get the 1v1 kill. Because Uzi, once again, on the AD carry, he's getting the minion wave control. He has a bunch of life steal. The tables have turned this time, Kobe. Exhaust comes down. Uzi that looking to continue this fight. Nope. Just ran. That's that disengage I was talking about. The rise can pull off. When you rune prison, you proc your passive, you get your own shield and a little bit of speed to walk away. It actually baits out a summoner spell advantage here. So Bjergsen may want to reset and then look for the all-in or sustain off of the biscuit that has been delivered to him. Well, he's definitely not playing for the farm victory. 14 <laughs> to 34. It's just... I mean, we're only three minutes into the game, but it's practically a non-viable win condition at this point, unless he can just start zoning Uzi completely away from participating in the game. Three. Low enough HP, he'll have to get back, so let's see what he does come back with, see if he does decide to go for some sort of an all-in. All right. Taking his health back is going to make things work. Yeah, there's so much of an advantage to controlling the early waves. Not only can the enemy not fight you in the minions because they'll take extra minion damage, but you get access to these rooms that are going to give you all your mana and health back. So Uzi is able to get off his recall by his... Ooh, never mind, changes his... Ooh, okay, dagger. Hanging out, hanging out, waiting for money, waiting for some more money. Okay, long. Uzi's got plenty of money, dude. Yeah. <laughs> He's ready to go. Ready to go. Pointing the spear straight towards Bjergsen. This one's for you. He's calling his shot on his way back down. He sees the back-to-back -back championship in his sights right now. 42 CS to his name. And level six acquired. Level six acquired, which means third point in Rin. Yes. <laughs> that <laughs> really important power spike. Three, zero, three, zero. The skill allocation if you're playing Callista on a one versus one. Not much use in allocating your ghost or your ulti, considering you don't have a buddy to use them with. So, Bjergsen coming back now. Second Dorian's ring, Ruby Crystal, Fairy Charm. Let's see what he wants to do here. Likely going for that all in against Uzi. He's poking prepping down him a little with bit a little, yeah, yeah, prepping him with a little poke. Uzi does have plenty of life still, as we mentioned, now with an extra Doran's uh, blade worth of it. And uh, once again, focus on the minions. Get them pushing in his side. Once again, focus on the minions. Also, damage coming down onto Uzi here as I take a look at the inventories and see a very similar situation to what we saw in the past with potions. Huh. One for Uzi, four for Bjergsen. So Bjergsen's fine taking some more of these trades. Even if he loses out on them initially, he will heal up. He will be in a better spot at the end of the day, but not if he keeps eating those pierces. Root down. Ooh. That minion blocked a lot. Yeah, that minion, that's a hero minion right there. Uzi needs to make sure he's giving that minion a pat on the back at the end of the, this one. You can't prep him at all right there. Nope. That's what we talked about. The minions, if they've taken any damage like that, are just going to get one shot by the turret. So once again, going to have a lot of room to, to work with here for Uzi. Life stealing off the minion wave, and Bjergsen is Uzi moving in. almost has his summoner spell back up now as well. Bjergsen going to be taken low. Goes to the exhaust. Shield also proc. Looking to maybe find some more. Taking Uzi very, very low. Pierce blocked by the cannon minion. 
Yerkson looking for a little more damage, not quite able to find it. Okay, this is the last health potion for Bjergsen to drink. Uzi's on a little bit low mana, but he should have enough for another rend onto Bjergsen if they get into a skirmish. Barrier up for Bjergsen, exhaust nearly back up for Uzi. Bjergsen wanted to go for something here, able to find the root, looking for the overpower, not quite connecting, oh. likely would have gotten the kill from that. Incredibly close right there. But that is going to be a reset from Uzi. Goes back to purchase, and Bjergsen doesn't have many options except looking for uh, a minion swaparoo here. Throw him under the turret. Is that the old Get him in there. For? If you're, no, that's not quite it, but at least he found some way to use it. If you're trying to shove the wave up, why not just teleport the wave under the turret? I mean, you get a couple extra seconds there, right? Because he moved the minions around, so the turret started killing them quicker before Uzi was quite back. Uh, it's a small thing, but definitely there. I like the Hex Drinker pickup from Uzi here. It's going to give him a lot of extra health against Bjergsen's burst. He knows that he wins this game automatically if it goes to farm. 78 to 53, not even close. Bjergsen has to go for an all-in very soon. And as long as Uzi has the Hex Drinker, it's very difficult for Bjerg to do that properly. Uzi oh, going yeah. back for one last shop now, picking up plenty of potions to make sure Bjergsen doesn't manage to out-sustain him. Uzi's got all the luxuries now. Picking up his fur coat so he can have a nice, easy victory here. Because Bjergsen, he's starting to sweat. As you said, the CS numbers, not looking too pretty for him. Yeah, Bjergsen trying his hardest to keep Uzi away from this wave. He doesn't want to have any of his spells blocked up by these damn minions again. He just wants to get in Uzi's face and apply that signature rise damage. Don't know if he'll be able to do it, though. Time is running out. 80 CS for the LPL representative. North America's... Bjergsen's got to be careful here. Ooh. Okay, Bjergsen going a little bit underneath the turret there. I was going to say North America's favorite only at 71, so still down 10 CS compared to his opponent, and it's going to be even more. Yeah. Even the announcer agrees. Blue team is nearly <laughs> out of minions. Bjergsen is nearly out of time. It's time to go. Do or die. He's just got to force him into skirmishes here, and, uh, and hopefully for him, Uzi would take the fight and not focus on any sort of CS. Bjergsen wants to look for even more, but he just, he's just not able to find the damage. And remember, you still got a Hex Drinker to burst through. Uzi's at 90. Bjergsen at 75. Continuing to try to apply the pressure, but Bjergsen's going to be taken low. It's still such a difficult fight for Bjerg to even attempt to go for. Going to get his shield on that one. Continuing to farm it up. 82 for Bjerg, 93 for Uzi. We're at the point oh! now where Bjergsen is likely going to be taken down underneath the turret. Ladies and gentlemen, you're back to back one versus one champion, Uzi. What a magnificent laner. He's got his fan crowd here and everything. The crowd says it all. The smile on his face says even more. The man came here to win from day number one, and he deserves his victory here on the final day of All-Star 2017. What a show. Now he's going to have another trophy to sit next to last year's, and he's gonna be looking forward to the third next year. I'm pretty sure that he'll always get voted in as long as he's playing. As here's long the, as he keeps winning like this. Here's another look though. He even corners Bjergsen inside the three range minions. There you go, bless up. Uzi's able to get bless the victory up, boy. once again. <laughs> so many LPL fans here in the audience today ecstatic that Uzi can walk away with the win in this one. We are going to get to see him and his team going into the five versus five final following this as well. So Uzi could walk away today, Kobe, with a double victory. Everything seems to be going his way. I mean, the crowd is cheering for him. It feels like it is hometown for him. <laughs> yeah. They brought the hometown with them, uh, and he's able to get the first victory. Now, this, we'll see if this is going to affect uh, the five on five match as well, because now he's filled with confidence. Oh, Notoriously, yeah. Notoriously, uh, Uzi, you know, on Summoner's Rift in five on fives, hasn't been able to win a lot of the trophies. However, this could be what changes it all. This could be what he needs, man. This could be that spark. This could be the lightning that ignites Uzi and gets him going. But to hear more about that 10th series, let's send it down to Shox and the 1v1 champ. Yes, for sure. And uh, Uzi is here in front of a lot of people in the audience. How does it feel to be crowned the 1v1 champion once again, Uzi? Uh, 真的真的非常的开心,就自己其实真的是没有想过可以再拿到这个比赛的冠军。
um, I'm just feeling really happy right now. I never imagined I can win this one more time. Well, um, it looked like a very tough matchup. Bjergsen is obviously a good opponent. Tell me about that last matchup. Why did you choose to go for the Kalista, and how difficult was that last matchup for you? Uh, 我自己是比较喜欢玩AD英雄的，然后再加上那半道比较多嘛，然后版本的关系也就这个英雄可以在前期可以去和AP英雄打一下嘛，然后就是其实我也没有试过，就是尝试一下，就其实也是没有办法的
Bertuzzi as he has to go up against the LMS now and try and get another title, take another trophy home here at the end of 2017. I mean, effectively, he's all warmed up. He's ready to sure. go. He had his warm-up game. He doesn't need any practice 1v1. games like the rest of them. Exactly. And, and he's the best 1v1 player, so if he best loses, clickers. it's not his fault. It's not his <laughs> fault. It must be the other exactly. four. <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> turning to the finals on Summoner's Rift, we've got LMS taking on the LPL. And in this matchup, who do you think is going to come out on top? So prediction statement one more time. Okay, so surprise, surprise, I'm going to vote for the LPL here. Now, the thing is, is you go through the LMS games, BB and Sorter have been a big reason why they've won. They've won by themselves, though. So Kars is not giving them any mm. attention. They actually have just been playing that well. Right. That said, now they're looking across from Mako, Uzi, and MLXG. He loves to give attention there, which means Karsa should have to change up his style and answer that. Guys, it's a finals desk, and I can't vote for Korea. So it's always a bit weird. I'm already <laughs> right, unsure. So we, just, so we skip you, right? <sighs> I mean, if that's how you want to do it. But no, at, at the end of the day, I'm going to pay it forward. LPL beat the LCK yesterday. And the thing about this team By here. transitive property. Exactly. They are now that's the new one Korea. thing. And there I could stop is. my sentence there. But what I'm also seeing is I'm using words like macro and win conditions at All Star to describe LPL. They had yeah. a better understanding. They clearly have uh, got the fruits of all their labor when it comes to all the practicing. So I really do think it's going to be LPL, and I'm going to say about a 3-1. I mean, they had a water bottle boot camp, man. That's true. Yeah. All right, That's so true. they're set up for success. Two-week water bottle boot camp. Isaiah, what do you exactly. think? Exactly. I mean, they put in the practice. It's It's been showing bought very well. Bottles. Yeah, bought the water bottle. So I'm also in the LPL camp, uh, and you guys have kind of covered the reasoning there. I will say, if LMS wins, I do think it looks like Sword Art and Karsa playing incredibly well together. Yep. If you can control vision, if you can have that that advantage there and allow Karsa to get on an aggressive jungler to take over the game, that's, to me, what a series win looks like for them. Ever the analyst giving me both sides of the coin there. Isaiah, we'll see which dream team will prevail after a quick break. LMS versus LPL kicks off when we return. Got to go with the footwork there. Uzi walks behind oh. the minion. Oh. It's the kick! Pop! Oh. One for Bjergsen. Two more. This is so Uzi. intense. Look at the player Uzi. there. Throw that minion at him, boy! Go! Oh. 82 for Bjerg, 93 for Uzi. We're at the point oh. now where Bjerg is likely going to be taken down underneath the turret. Ladies and gentlemen, you're back to back one versus one champion. Uzi!